and slash is back. <laughs> he was gone there for a second. So slash, you can read m the new guy, Ingruet. Okay. Uh, Ingruid, is this the part? This yep. man and woman appear to have been deep in conversation, working at closing two bulging satchels. They move to embrace. <laughs> Until the woman notices your approach and pauses, her smile faltering a little. <laughs> yeah, because I'm so beautiful. Hail and well met. Wait, it, he's, he's talking. Mm -hmm. No, he's not anymore. Can we help you? She looks to her companion, brows furrowed with confusion. Do you know this man, Nonton? Oh, it's Nonton! Hello, Nonton! Good to see you again! Okay, in um, case you missed it, um, that was a guy we met that said, Oh, my, my buddy has been killed by a bear. And when we found the bear and killed it, we could talk to the ghost of his companion and he told us that he got killed by Nonton. And that Nonton wanted hmm. his wife. And we took a vote to avenge him. So that's what's happening. No matter what. Nonton coughs. <coughs> yes, I think we met in Valewood. I warned him about the bear. He inclines his head. Glad to see you've made it. Was it something else you wanted? You two seem to be in a hurry. You two are in good spirits for people who just lost a friend. And I know what really happened in this bear caves, Nonton. Well, right now, I think it's what Nonton himself, I think, is the wife of the guy also uh, is included. In this conspiracy. No. So, I think the two of you are a bit in a hurry. Uh, yes, I imagine so. Ingrid loves. We're packing for a trip, actually. I've been meaning to visit the Fiance Bay and. She lives with Nonton. Well, in truth, I think I've had my fill of this town. Nonton reaches to take a hand. It's time to make some new scenery, he says. Okay, I know what really happened in the beer cave, Nonton. The color drains from Nonton's face. I, I, I don't know what you mean. I told you the truth of it. Are you accusing him of something? Ingrid looks to Nonton, touching his arm. If it's about the accident, we are both grieving. Perils lost. But it was the wild animals doing. Nonton shakes his head, head minion tree. You see a tremble in his hands. Oh, what, what, what would you s make you suggest such a thing? Okay, I had a conversation in the cave. I saw Paris' last moments as he lifts them. I saw you cut him with his knife. Or oh, rather, 14. Stop. I have no patience for cowards and liars. And uh, why do you do this? He was a friend. Because I'm taking the worst yeah. off thing. How much is your resolve anyway? We haven't. Did you look at that between the? Yeah, because I'm a dwarf yes. and I am preferring the direct way. Yeah. How much is your resolve, though? I mean, what is that resolve? Um, resolve is um, how good I am to uh, um, talk about my feelings, <laughs> so to speak. How much? I, I can show you. Uh, how much do you have? I think sixteen, but I need to find out. Ah. Okay. Okay. Well, you got plenty then. Yeah. Nonton flinches, but meets her gaze. After a moment, he sets his jaw and nods. <laughs> Fine, I confess it. I did it. I saw to it he'd never leave the cave. His hands falls to his sword belt, and I'll do it again. Ingrid, Nonton, wait! Ingrid raises her hand. I don't know what you saw in the caves, but this isn't what you're seeing. Pelly, my husband, he was as much as a beast as a bear. I tried to leave. Okay, Ingrid. Still <coughs> I tried to leave the first time. I suffered his temper, but he wouldn't have it. She looks away, express expression pained. Nonton, he we met, 
And I knew they felt someone special, someone kind who cared for me. So basically, I have to interject here because there's a game called Arcana, which wasn't really good, but the first mission was you find a ghost. The ghost tells you he got killed by his friend. You find his friends with the wife of the ghost and they tell you, oh, this guy is actually the bad guy. And then you go back to the cave and then you fight the ghost. So <laughs> I have the feeling this is copy pasted from that game. Because mm. this is exactly the same story. I even think that a bear was involved in that game. But well. Montney, we met and I knew I'd found someone special, someone kind who cared for me. Please, all we want is to leave this place, to start somewhere else. She looks down at the satchels. We've got some coins saved up. You could have it if you only let us go. Okay, sounds fair enough. <laughs> Hand it over. No, whatever the reasons you caused the man's death, I'm taking you to the magistrate. Attack. Pally doesn't got a second chance. You two don't deserve one either. For keep the money, use it to start your own li new life. And five, I don't need your coin, get out of my sight. Mm. So, that's a moral choice now. So we have taken a dwarfish vow, which is basically sacred, that we will avenge his death. But also he hadn't told us that he liked to beat his wife up. And that's a thing I can't have. Hmm. Question is just now, do we take the money? <laughs> hmm. I go with no. No? Yeah, because... Well, I kind of want to be the good hero. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. So... Let him keep the money. The question is, I don't need your coin, get out of my sight, or keep the money, use it to start a new life. Mm. Mm. I mean, aren't they both the same thing, though? They are the same I mean, thing. Yeah. Just as uh, the one has a harsher tone. That one has a tone. Like, yeah. fuck you, you you killed your man. And the other one yeah. is, okay, you killed him. Yeah, get your, uh, keep your money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going with uh, get out of my sight because, well. You're just upset about it, huh? I'm upset about the whole thing and I will go back and punch his body or something. Oh, she says, thank you for your compassion. Yep. Yeah. And there you are, by the compassionate. Let's go, Lonton. We have a long way ahead of us. Okay, those guys are fleeing now. Not fleeing, but leaving. Mm. I take the crossbow and wish. the money. Something else in here? Nope. Those. What's the those? The bottle of sun red is half empty. Interesting. But not too interesting. So let's talk to the dwarf that is trying to get money from the farmer. To see his point of view. What is it? Of course. I sort of kind of need to regenerate before I continue to do something harder. Okay, Alfra's house maybe? I don't know what that house is about. But uh, two people are arguing to each other up here. So here we got two very trained men. <laughs> Slox the Ursupar and Klink. Ooh. I like, I know like 20 clinks, so <laughs> let's talk to Clink. <laughs> As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this man's soul. Voices from its past seem to call out to you, Slash. They call out to you. To me. They want to be read. 
You see a small group of people gathered around the ruins of a house. Um, ah, the destruction continues out from the single dwelling through the entire village. Not a single building still stands. Rubble is scattered everywhere. One of the men in the group leans over something in the debris. It is this man, younger, barely more than a boy. The man reaches out and shakes the boy by the shoulder. The boy makes no sound and doesn't respond to the man's disturbance. The man looks up to the other members of the group and shrugs, standing to rejoin his friends. The boy suddenly sits up, eyes wide. He scrabbles backward, away from the group, looking around in horror. The group moves toward him in unison, eliciting a yelp from the boy, who tries to move farther away. A woman in the group puts out her hands, stopping the rest. Uh, oh, there. She turns to them reproachfully, motions for them to stay, then looks at the boy on the ground, who is trying to push himself through what remains of a wall. He seems unaware he has even stopped. The woman slowly moves toward the boy, hands out, speaking in a low, calming tone. For a time, the boy doesn't even hear. He just closes his eyes and braces himself against the wall, expecting violence. Eventually, the woman's words work through the fear, and he hears her. He opens his tear-filled eyes and stares at her. She holds out her hand to him. He looks at it, seemingly confused by the offer, and then hesitantly reaches out. She takes his hand in hers and leans down to help him stand. Hmm. All right. That's the story of Plank. What is it? Huh. As you wish. Slox Zosopar. As you near, you feel a vibrant blah blah blah. It's always the same. I don't want to use it all the time. You see a lone man standing in a field. He looks around, surveying the crops. Occasionally he bends to examine a leaf up close. He is intent on what he is doing, completely absorbed in his work. This man approaches him from behind. He moves slowly but does nothing to mask his approach. In his hand he holds a large sword. There appears to be no malice or hatred in the man's demeanor. He almost seems pleased. The first man hears his approach and stands, turning away from the plant he was inspecting. His face breaks into a smile and he opens his arms to welcome the approaching man. The smile freezes into a grimace as the second man thrusts the sword through his stomach. Its place now protruding from his back. His arms slowly fall to his side and blood starts to drip from the sword onto the plants below the man. As the first man crumbles to his knees, the second pulls the sword out, a tear slowly falling down the cheek of his still smiling face. Whatever happens there? Well? Mm. How may I help? A cloudy vision. I guess. Okay, what is it? let's go into the next house. Oh yeah, we can see we can see this kind of things because we are all the watcher. Mm. Since we survived the bivouac. Oh, what do we have here? A kitty cat. Hello, kitty cat. Meow. Meow. I'm fat and ugly. Feed me. Feed me more. More. What is it? <laughs> Let's talk to Ofra. Winfrey. Ofra. <laughs> yeah, you see what it is there. That's <laughs> 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 so stupid. Okay. A dire wooden woman is standing in front of the fireplace, humming a quiet tune to herself. Or perhaps to her unborn child, for she is clearly quite pregnant. She turns her head slightly as you enter. Continue. Well met, friend. Uh, well, finally, I started to think the woman makes a startled noise once she turns around and sees you. Oh, I'm sorry, I was expecting someone else. She gives you a cautious smile. Can I help you? Nice cat. <laughs> <laughs> Alfros makes smiles brightly. Oh, thank you. She's a sweetheart. Keeps house clear of mice too. So, what are we choosing? Yeah, there isn't much to uh, choose. Yeah, I just arrived. Let's talk to get to know the locals. Were you with one of the caravans? She looks at you hopefully. Master Odemos, by chance? I was. I'm afraid the rest of the caravan was killed. Oh God, this is the sister of the 
woman we were with <laughs> when she was killed by the winds. Oh, God. Yeah. Offer covers her mouth with a hand, eyes wide with horror. For a few moments, she can manage nothing but a strangled voice lit gasping, her eyes brimming with tears. I knew. I told her it was a dangerous path to take. Kalisha was always so certain she could take on any danger. Offer sniffs. <laughs> oh, my poor sister. Oh, I'm sorry, stranger. I just I can't believe she's gone. Okay. I don't want to read the woman's voice anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing such a good job. Yeah. Get the marrow over. <laughs> <laughs> if only I hadn't called her here. If I hadn't written to her, she might still be alive somewhere. Alfred's <laughs> face crumples and a solitary tear slides down her cheek. All right. And Kalisha uh, mentioned that she thought you needed help. Perhaps I can provide some assistance. Quit your sniveling. How are you going to raise a child if you're this weak? <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything I can do? Or oh, leave? Okay. Goodbye. I'll leave you to your grief. <laughs> okay. Um, Kalisha mentioned that you're in trouble. Offer looks at you with some surprise before dabbing at her nose with a sleeve. That's kind of you to offer, but I don't think if I could impose this on you. Uh, please never let me have woman on my on my party. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not a small favor. I'm worried about the baby. Offer wipes at her eyes. What? Yeah. He wipes at her eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she's crying, you know, so she's wiping her eyes. Okay. Or wiping at them, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I'm worried about the baby, about the legacy. I told Kalisha as much as I could. But all I know is that for a long time now, every child born in Gilded Vale has been soulless, empty. Yeah. Uh, we, we noticed that one. <laughs> yeah, that is a problem. It's happening to so many mothers and Lord Rederick. He excites all of them, calling it a sign of the gods' stiff's favor. She sniffs. <laughs> With my head hurt, gone, I don't know how I'd manage if I lost my home too. Okay, no voice. I hope Kalisha could help me. As I say, <laughs> Renga, the old midwife, knows a way to prevent a child being hollowborn. Yeah, I'm on my way to her. No, to him. I know. Yeah. I've heard of that, too. The yeah. old midwife. Okay. There's a way to do that. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, there, are, there is. There is a way to prevent a child from being hollowborn, isn't there? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Okay, but she moved out to South Anselor's Compass two seasons ago. This journey is too far for me. I can make it as I am. But I don't have anyone else now with Kalisha gone. More tear and round stone her face. Please, can you help me? I find Ranga for you. If I boss with kind Vifaris. And I'm not with the gold pack knights, so... Eh, I can't do anything of that. That's a long way to go. What's in it for me? No. Um. I think about it if I ever had that way. I'm not yeah. one for charity. Handle this yourself. Hmm. Well, I mean, you know, you got to do number one, don't you? You got to take the mission. All for us, blinks. You Eyes will. Wide. Oh, God bless you. Here, I'll give you a coin to pay. Am I doing good here? Yeah, I'll yeah. give you a coin to pay with her. No. Pay her with. No, you can't do it. You didn't trouble yourself with that. I think it's a, a drink she fashions out of. Well, I'm not sure, but it shouldn't be too much of a burden to carry back. How does she know that, man? She doesn't know what it is, even. Yeah. Yeah. Both us confused. Why are you suddenly so masculine? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Anslux Compass is what we call the lagoon at the south. You have to cross the wilds to get here. That's what keeps me from trying it myself. <laughs> so basically we are just Monty Python by now. <laughs> uh. 
She clasps her hands together. Thanks again. Julie, you'll be saving us both. She sets a hand to her on her stomach, smiling through her tears. Hmm. Okay, we got hmm. some money, and if we go there, we will help. I can't do nothing with the cat. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Must gather your party before venturing forth. Okay. Hold on your shoes. Hi, look at Where are they? <laughs> Action and slash house. But they're comfortable. <laughs> Yes. Look at my new shoes. Mm-hmm. Take care of it. See my west. See my west. Made from rare gorilla chest. Uh, my daughter doesn't have uh, shoes. She has shoes that she calls by the brand that makes them. So she's like, well, these aren't shoes. These are Toms. Or these aren't shoes. These are Clarks. <laughs> Well, these aren't shoes. These are something else. Well, there's a problem there. You are male. <laughs> <laughs> there's a picture on the internet. Yeah, there are pictures on the internet, I know. Um, on the left side, you have um, all the colors women are knowing, like fuchsia, magenta. And on the right mm. side, you have like red, blue, green. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, okay, look at here. Uh, then tell me on what's on the right side. <laughs> okay, so yeah. guys, I knew. I'm still trying to find that dwarf. That had quite a problem. So right now I'm really hoping that they didn't lie to me, by the way. The pair that got away with murder. Because mm -hmm. that would make me a really angry dwarf. How's that? Spainer. Gods keep you. I just talked German, didn't I? There he is, Spainer, not, not Daiser. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know who you yeah. are. And don't much care. Keep walking. We are not chat with foreigners. Elof never says, Ah, careful. Look, they are cut from the same cloth as this rowdies who attacked me. He wrinkles his nose. Smells like it, too. Okay, Trumbull says you have been threatening his family. So you're outside of the middle. What was that about? Wait, someone fancies himself a mellow, eh? What's that about? It's about Trumbull thinking he's king of the town. On account of he's got the mill to his name. It's about him barely giving us anything for the wheat we bring him. They bring him wheat. Interesting. And then cutting our purses when we need to buy grain. It's about farmers going hungry while some bosses get switched off the crops. Yeah, so they're, they're bringing him the wheat. And he's got the mill, right? So he's breaking the wheat down into flour. Yeah. And what this guy is complaining about is that they bring him the wheat, he grinds it down into flour, and then he gives them less flour back than they gave him wheat, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he cuts off a bit. Uh-huh. And that's yeah. exactly what we found out. Huh. So that's what this fucking about. Now shove off. Swamma says you have been threatening his family. Maybe I could go talk to him for you. What yeah. are you doing in here then? And what if I buy you a small round? Will you talk to me then? I take that one. The dwarves know what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Swamma considers this briefly. He looks at the others. Fair enough. You bring us something to wet our throats and might be all fell up to trading words. Mm -hmm. Bring beer. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, action. That's a nice picture. Mm -hmm. Welcome. 
Hello again. Come to rest your feet for a while. No, I could use rhyme help. No. Um. Could you see what you have for sale? Because I need air. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Could I interest here. you in exchanging an oil-soaked feather for a um, half a shot of uh, your best ale? <laughs> 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 or maybe this lovely bit of string with the curly end and a frayed other side? That's how it works. Half a fern. I have half a fern here. By the way, drinking. A split that's twig. A, that's a good with idea. With a copper dipped in. Right? <laughs> Hail and well met. <laughs> what would you give me for this, by the way? Yes. Greetings. All right. You again. What do you want now? About this trouble with Mbilla? Maybe I could get him to talk to you. How you think I get to talk to him when we haven't? This man's sick as a pet bog. Whatever that is. I heard he got his soul red, found his skin, used to grow sun red trees for the Adrian Lord. Yeah, we found some uh, sun red. Up until they figured out their side was losing, explained why his, his knee is still edged to bend to whatever lord or lady crosses the road. He be holed up in the mill for days, the coward. Dwarfs I see you concernedly, but here. If you want to give it a shot, then good luck. We owe you one if you manage it. Yes. All right. But I have beer now, so why can't I give him the beer? Well, God's keep. Hmm. Because I sucked, I can't talk to him. So the other Hi. guys are telling me day, to stranger. talk to. Swainer. What is it? Yes. Do I have to hand it over to him or something? Mm, I think he's good. He's already got one. Hmm. All right. What is it? So that's the thing that's hard to clear up. So I guess we leave it at that. Hmm. <laughs> You might want to uh, check your stream again. It looks blank to me. It looks blank. He won't see me coming. It might be on my end though. Let me refresh my side first. Let me see. <coughs> Wouldn't be surprised. Many things went wrong today. Well, I just won't, uh, won't do as expected Fresh <laughs> here today. God. Uh, okay. No, I got it back up on this side. All right. Oh. Okay, good. Thank I see. You, stop this. I don't want to. You got an ad on your side. <laughs> yeah. All right. So first off, you wanted to know, and I also wanted to know, how good he is at, so lore he has two, guided trial, mm -hmm. so uh, resolution it was, right? Uh, was it resolution? Yeah, no, resolve, resolve, resolve. resolve. Yes. Mm -hmm. Endurance, stealth, athletics. Am I missing something here? Labor's resting bonus. Endurance, health, conception, will, interrupt. Here, resolve 16. I have 16 resolve. 
And resolve reflects mm. the character's internal drive, determination, fearlessness, and the emotional intensity they can project to others. It can be useful for mental mm. intimidation, leadership, and convincing performances. In combat, it helps characters to maintain the concentration and contributes to the will and deflection defenses. Okay. As opposed to its dissolve, which is not a good trait. <laughs> He's just dissolving slowly. <laughs> now, if you take the character's resolve and it's dissolve, and you have them and multiply them by two, you get the character's absolve, which is what it can do to the other character's solves at a distance. Seems about right. Okay. So, I should go to Sawet Noir now and through the Black Meadows. And what is this woman said? Where she is? Was it Dire Forge Village? I don't know. But I need to go to Sawet Noir first, anyway. Maybe there's someone who can help me. First off, let's go to Valenwood to talk to that asshole again. At least try to find out if the pair is speaking the truth. Oh, I could use a wee kip. What is it? As you wish. Okay. Up here was the camp where I, I rescued the, the dwarf guy. And somewhere around here. By the way, I really love this map. Here is the bear camp. You must gather your party. During combat, an arrow moving out of your own character selection. What is it? Too late. I hate it that they have the tips in the loading screen, but the loading screens are so fast nowadays that you can't even <laughs> think about reading. You don't it. have time to read the tips. Yeah. <laughs> Let alone read out loud. Yeah, that's frustrating. <laughs> so I can't talk to him again. Keeping an eye out. Not too bad. Okay. Let's go into sneaky mode, maybe we find something. Oh, seems to be that way. Oh, this guy is oh, has low health. Okay, I need to rest at some point, but right now I still have my bonus from the tavern. Oh, but so she is. She already has minor fatigue, so oh, I really should think about resting at some point. Okay, let's travel to blah 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 Vale again. Gilded Vale. Gilded Vale. And then I talked to the miller. Valewood and Gilded Vale. Valewood and Gilded Vale. Yes. And I talked to the miller. Mr. Miller. Click outside of the screen so the game closes. God damn it. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, YouTube. I can't cut that out. I've just imports the files. Oh, new guys. Rudolf here, Neckator, and Doran Chamberlain. So, um, I think that these guys are actually the contributors to the Kickstarter of this game. Hmm. And I will stop reading out their background stories because so far we haven't gotten anything useful out of them. Mm. Well, if you play the game, you can read it on yourself, and maybe I will do it sometimes, but right now I'm just not in the mood for it. The stories are nice and all, but, well, it's just like, uh, um, most of the times the background stories aren't fitting to the characters you see. Like, you see a guy with huge armor and he's talking about magic. 
Just wanted to see if there's something here. But no. Um, well, yeah, I just want to. Don't want to read everything out. I'm reading a lot as it is. <laughs> okay, let's go in this windmill. And talk to this guy. I don't want to kill him or his family. Because, well, he's needed. But I am pretty sure he's undercutting people. Like, he is. He's a sneaky guy. Well met, friend. Okay, tr trouble not caught greeting. You are back. You had any love for Swainer? I spoke to Swainer. And what did he say? He says you are threatening farmers unfairly. Not threatening, treating. Raising prices and giving them rotten gain. Grain. Of course he does. He's been saying nothing else I for days now. Yeah. Does he not give them back the same grain that they gave him, though? I mean, they give him the grain. He mills it up. How is it? How is he giving people rotten grain back? I mean, they must have given him rotten grain to begin with, yeah, right? Yes, that's what they are saying, but uh, I don't know for sure anymore. Yeah, me either. I'm really starting to wonder if they're telling tales on him, and he's actually completely above board. He's just like, what do you want me to do? I can't make uh, on, on the other know, hand, lemonade out of lemons. Yeah, but on the other hand, he was telling me f uh, on a first um, conversation that yeah. um, he has nothing and he can't get uh, get him be better grain when actually he was just cutting mm -hmm. back. So it could easily be, be uh, um, what was it, Sveno's grain that is good. And he's just giving him mm. the bad grain because he doesn't like him. And I don't think mm. that I can tolerate that. So, okay. Of course he does. He's been saying nothing else for days now. The man's delusional. If he wants grain, he'll have to pay for it. Okay. Grab the miller by the neck. If you ever want to breath again, you may want to reconsider. Tremble scrabbles at your arm. Dropping his clubs. The 16 <laughs> Yeah. Straining for breath. When you relinquish your hold, he grasps and coughs brevently and raggedly. Fine, fine, damn you. He holds up a hand when his son and daughter move towards you. Enough! You tell that core, I gap his grain, and he can have it at the same price everyone else pays. No, that's fair. And now I appreciate it if you get out of my mill. Well, of course. Mm -hmm. So, he gets now the grain at the price everyone else pays. I think that's a fair resolve. Mm -hmm. Okay, how late is it, anyway? Day 5, hour 2, so it's deep in the night. Okay, let's travel over to the tavern, to the black doggy dog. Perception affects a character's chance to cause interrupt on attacks. What is it? And there it is, gone again. <laughs> Take care of it. And I clicked out of the game. All right. Mm. Let's talk to Sveno. Good day, stranger. You again, what is it? What if I told you that Trumbull changed his mind about his grain prices? The dwarf looks up, blinking. What? Are you serious? He exchanges look with his fellows, uh, who grin hesitantly. The old man listened to reason. About time. I told him he'd come around, but damn if he didn't take his time about it. He sets a few coppers on the table. Here, buy yourself a drink. Now that we can afford it, goes for you too as well. Drinks on me. Yes. All right. Drinks for everyone. I'll take care of it. Can't thank you enough. Okay, those guys are glad. And now we are taking a sleep. Welcome. I like a room. Okay, but I've got to leave you with it. I've got a few things I got to do, man. I got to go.
gotta, uh... Okay, then I'm going to, I cut out. to stop the stream after reviews. And yeah. upload the stuff to YouTube. And I see you on YouTube. Okay. First off, let's rest. Hey, thanks for having me. Wait a second. Just a second. If you're getting another dream, I want to keep it. And you don't get another dream. Okay. So, goodbye, everyone. Thank you for watching. And take care.